Kate Garcia, thank you so much for coming to the studio. Thank you for having me. This is very exciting. Yes, and we have a couple cameos here today. I'll start. I would, I would get in trouble if I didn't introduce my wife first. <laughs> right, my wife Bridget Hennessy. Hello, Jason. Thank you. <laughs> and then we also have another little four-legged friend running around here. You'll hear him panting. Um, <laughs> He's settled right at my feet. Little Archie Hennessy as well. Yes, and. And he got to know you, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. So for those that are listening, tell everybody what you do for a living. So what I do for a living and for a passion and a hobby mm -hmm. is I work with animals. Okay. Specifically, 99% of my uh, work is with dogs and cats. So as a professional pet groomer, and I've been doing that in a professional capacity for close to 30 years. Wow. As an Amateur, I'd say I started at my dad's knee, who was a veterinarian and okay, and a novice, and I experimented and played with animals since I was a child. So, and experimented, I mean haircut-wise, <laughs> 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 just to be clear. Mm. Um, but the medical side of it has always fascinated me too. But yeah, so yeah. most of my life and my working career has been with pets and children. Got it. And do you come from a big family, a lot of siblings? Yeah, I kind of tease that my father, being a veterinarian, had a litter. Okay. And uh, and I tease that my mom was a good Irish Catholic and had seven kids. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, wow. Huh. So I am the sixth of seven. And were you the only one to kind of pursue an interest that was similar to your father with dealing with animals or what? Yes. So we all did our time, as some would say, my siblings in my father's business, mm -hmm. having to work for dad or come in to help dad. But I was the only one that took it up as a passion and as a profession. I see. Got it. Um, so going back to when you were a child, right? You pr like you said, you probably spent some time at you know your dad's, um, I guess, veterinarian clinic would it be? Or a, a hospital, a animal hospital? hospital, small okay. animal hospital, yeah. Yep. And, um, you know, did you kind of know that this was your passion early in life or what? I think my family knew it before I did, mm -hmm. to be quite honest. Uh, those around me saw how intrigued I was and how involved I would get with the pets. I don't remember wanting toys, really, ever. Dolls mm -hmm. were never my thing. Stuffed animals, I never really liked stuffed animals. I thought they were creepy because they were so inanimate, uh -huh. <laughs> where real pets actually talk to you and you know I didn't have to make believe with them because there was a for me a genuine conversation happening I didn't realize my family thought I was just making up stories that they were saying to me because <laughs> I was actually telling everybody what they were saying yeah you know I didn't realize it was there was a disconnect I to that degree so when I would go into the animal hospital it was very interesting because you can imagine my introduction to pets were a lot of them were sick a lot of them were hurt, and they weren't in their home. They were displaced, so there wasn't anybody really around them that quote unquote knew them. Mm -hmm. So it was it was a it was a natural place for me to go stand by the cage and kind of chat. Yeah, huh? And say, hey, why you why are your eyes so big? Like, why are you so scared? Sure. That kind of thing. So I would make up reasons not to go to school. Hmm. <laughs> I have to go stay with dad at his work. I see. So I kind of teased that I was raised in a kennel, and oh. I was happy for it. Now, did you have family pets yourself? Yes. My mom, ironically, was afraid of dogs. And hmm. uh, all the pets we got were misfits that either couldn't, were being surrendered at my dad's hospital. Owners couldn't either afford to fix them or... My dad took pity and would take a dog that was broken and sick, fix it himself, and bring it home. So we always had kind of the off-kiltered pets, as my mom would say. Um, he at one point brought home, I guess there was a confiscation of a, a baby. I think it was an alligator. Okay. And uh, so that lived in our tub for about three days. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Until my mom was like, um, seven kids and a crocodile or an alligator ain't going to happen in this in yeah. Manhattan Beach. <laughs> so, oh, my gosh. No so I don't know. I know. Can you uh, imagine? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> it, it's one thing when your kids are bringing pets home. It's a whole other thing when I it's see the them dad. on TV and I'm, like, freaking out. Like, no. <laughs> oh, I love them. I, so I love, I love reptiles. I've had snakes. I've had guinea pigs. I've had rabbits. I've had... I've had temporarily had love birds, which is just, I think, an oxymoron of yeah. a term for those birds because they tend not to like each other after a bit. Um, dogs, cats, rats. I did, I did have the pleasure of pet sitting for a while, a kangaroo. 
Okay. <laughs> so that was an interesting job. In the United States? Yes, okay. yeah. Santa Clarita, actually. It, wow. <laughs> I don't see I them very often. I have to ask you something. So what, yeah. what would you, would you choose a cat or a dog? That's always like a question on Facebook. <laughs> so choose a cat or a dog. See, this is, I'm always about like, for what? <laughs> like, so right now I personally only have, I have a cat. I just recently uh, had a cat pass away quite suddenly. So it was oh, pretty sorry. devastating. Yeah. So, but um, as I've gotten older, I've always had dogs. But as mm. I've gotten older, you know, when you get home, a dog's like, hey, let's go out for a walk. <laughs> let's go for a run. What do you want to go hike? Yeah. And so I find myself when I get home, I want a cat that goes, hey, you want to sit on the couch and have a glass of wine? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have cats right now just because I can't, I don't feel that I can get out there and give a dog quite the... I like to have an animal in as close to the environment that they would naturally flourish in. Yeah. And it, a dog needs, depending on the breed, of course, um, there's a lot of needs that I don't feel I can meet spot on right now while I'm working a lot. Got it. So yeah. I, I did have an older companion dog that would travel with me to groom and was in my shop. So he did great. Yeah. But Cats are beautiful, but I'm allergic. Me, him, a lot our of people whole, are, yeah. Yeah. I figured you guys were. Yeah. yeah. That's the, I love them, though. They're beautiful. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, they're fun too. So, you know, I guess you 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 know grew up around this whole world, right? With your yeah. dad, um, you had animals at home. Graduated high school? Right? No, didn't. No? I was enrolled in high school. Okay. <laughs> for three and a half years. Yeah. Uh, decided to, you know, I was. So they didn't have the diagnosis of ADD or ADHD dyslexia, or that, yeah. any of those things mm -hmm. when I was growing up. They just knew that there was something. I believe when I was younger, I would read from left to right sometimes. Okay. And, or I would do this with the reading, like I would serpentine. And so they went and had my eyes checked to see if my eye could see correctly. And I would do eye exercises. But I just didn't flourish in school. So it was challenging. And by the time I hit high school, I was pretty much a rebel. Okay. So. That's not bad. No, no. It's, it served me. It served me well. I, I. I feel like I have hindsight on it when I look back, of course, but back in the day, I really could have been challenged, like, I needed some kind of adventure, yeah. and growing up in Los Angeles, you know, that was Hollywood. Sure. <laughs> so. Yeah. So when, when did you then actually get into the business that you're in now? Good question. So mm -hmm. being in high school, I, like I said, I'd go to my dad's work. To, I worked for him temporarily and on holidays or go help out. And when I was there one summer working with colorful hair and embarrassing my father professionally, he's like, you must wear a hat while you're here with that pink hair. I'm like, okay, Dad. You were a rebel, huh? Oh, yeah. And so there was a collie. I remember specifically the moment, and it was my dad was going to do a large hip surgery on this collie. It had needed hip surgery. And so it had this beautiful, a collie is this big, beautiful lassie dog. Mm -hmm. Full coat, just gorgeous. And when you prep for surgery, you know, you just take all that hair away. And I was mortified oh. that I had to just wreck this beautiful coat <laughs> on this dog. And I'm like, Dad, I can like braid the hair and lift it up and do like a comb over. So at least we'll shave that part. And when it's, you know, I could bring the hair back down over. And he's looking at me like, you know, the dog needs to walk. <laughs> he's like, get your price. So he, it was really clear. I loved messing around with hair. Mm -hmm. And one of our clients happened to be a professional groomer and she would take on students privately. Okay. So my dad put two and two together and said, I'm going to send you to grooming school. Oh, cool. So okay. he did that. I spent a year working as an apprentice and then he built a little space in his animal hospital and I started grooming. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. It was and wonderful. You, you had a love for it. You just kind of knew right away that this was your calling. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it was, you know, in the animal hospital, a lot of pets would come up, come into the animal hospital and show up that would get kicked out of grooming shops. Interesting. Not, grooming salons aren't, not all pets are conducive to us invading every square inch of their body in That's a really a rapid thing. way, yeah, right? Uh -huh. And understandably so, and I respect that, but we would get the animals that needed to be fully anesthetized to be shaved, and when I started doing haircuts, it's really hard to get a balanced haircut on an animal that's knocked out. Yeah. Like you can't get their ears straight. You can't get the, you know, I started lear wanting to make the aesthetics nice. So I started challenging my dad and said, hey, can we not anesthetize him? Just let me try to work with this animal. I know he bites. And I said, maybe just sedate him. And my dad's answer to that is like, well, sedation doesn't make them not bite. They just let go slower. Uh. <laughs> I'm like, mm. 
I'm like, so fully awake, let me just try it that way. Yeah. And so I was able to spend the time and figured out how not to get bit and why they were acting the way they were. And out of a necessity of not getting hurt and wanting not wanting them to have to be knocked out, I figured out how to navigate these miscommunications is what I call them now. I see. They're like miscommunications, sure, misunderstandings. Sure. Got it. Yeah, and it seems that, um, you know, you over, how long have you been doing this now? Professionally over 30 years. 30 years. Yeah, being paid for it, like, as a profession, as I, that I would call myself a groomer after I graduated. Prior to that, I was, you know, in high school, so. But it says here, right, so you're not just a groomer, you're also an esthetician, a pet esthetician. So the last 11 years, mm -hmm. I have dedicated to um, skin care issues with pets. Yeah. It's kind of a devastating roller coaster that a lot of pet owners and pets go through mm -hmm. to the degree that a lot of veterinarians are frust as frustrated with the problems as the owners are you know I, I've seen both sides of that because I've worked in animal hospitals a lot and I know that oh it's so frustrating to have these reoccurring allergies and reoccurring skin issues and a lot of veterinarians toolboxes of what they can do is pretty small hmm. and there's a, I, I found a group out of Italy that was, I went to a trade show and they were selling their wares and I thought they were showing the results of their products and their process and I thought, there's no way. Hmm. There was no way I'm, you know, raised in an animal hospital. I, I you know, I, my dad was a veterinarian. I have seen the results of skin issues and none of them recover the way these photographs were showing. Yeah. So I dove in and bought a bunch of their products and put it to the test. And sure as heck, I was so surprised how a little bit of technique and understanding and process really could change and turn things around. Yeah. And I was also mortified to know as a pet groomer, I was actually contributing to some of the problems that we see chronically out there. Uh. So yes, I, I bought the products, got involved. A veterinarian in the United States bought the distribution rights, and he has created a program, and so thus I became a certified pet esthetician mm. through a program with Dr. Favor, who's a veterinarian, and the product line is uh, Yves Saint Bernard. It's an Italian product. Okay. And so once I had worked with it for several years, we all got together and traveled to Italy, cool. to the, Italy, the academy out in Italy. Huh. It was so fun. Yeah. That sounds awesome. And I met groomers from Russia and from Spain and from Italy, of course, and from France. It was just a fantastic gathering. It was educational as well as fun. Yeah. As only the Europeans know how to do. <laughs> so esthetician, like, what do you do as, like, a dog for a dog? <laughs> yeah. That's it's a very good question. It's yeah. a very good question. And it, you'll be surprised how similar it is. Y have, you've gotten a facial before. Yeah, so I have, I've gotten facials too, and you close your eyes, and you're like, what are they doing now? What and are they, they doing? steam on your face. Right, there's yeah. steam, but your eyes are closed. Now they're putting goo and no goo. Goo on, <laughs> goo off. Goo <laughs> on, goo off. You're like, what is happening? I know so much more about my own skin just by learning what they're doing. And the process is very similar. I, I have clays, I have masks that <laughs> and steam. I mm. use an ozone therapy machine. So I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, yeah. I have a machine that uh, creates O3, okay. and it's got a tube, and it pushes it through a mat that I specialized mat that infuses the water in a tub. Okay. So it's kind of like a jacuzzi. Yeah. For them, they sit on this, they stand on this mat, and it bubbles through. It's really fun. And ozone is a natural antibacterial, antifungal, antiparasitic. Mm -hmm. It's a very soothing, natural way to kind of get at yeast and bacteria that are usually the culprits. An imbalance of yeast and bacteria is usually the culprit of most of these, you know, things that go sideways. Okay. Why they go sideways is a whole other thing. You know, it's a whole other, whether it's autoimmune disease, whether it's allergies, whether it's a parasite. You Got know, it. Those are the So the that's whys. what the stuff helps with on their so, face. It's everywhere, their entire body. Nobody. So I will in, I will do a mask on their entire body. Oh. I will wrap them in a cellophane and a warm towel and let it sit for 20 minutes, pull it up, then I exfoliate. Rinse that off and then you exfoliate with a proper appointed shampoo, whether it's a, if it's something for fungus and bacteria, whether it's something for just a light allergy and itchy skin. You know, if they have oozy sores, then it's a whole other route we take. The whole goal is to get them back to balance. Mm -hmm. 
that's the whole goal with any of this. So I do, then do a shampoo, and then I will rinse that, and then I will come back on with another conditioner or moisturizer. Mm, okay. So so I've got some questions. <laughs> so, yes, yes. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't be sorry. Like, I want you to ask all the questions you want. But so here's the question, sure. right? So, like, we, we used to drop our dogs off at the traditional groomer, right? Um, and, you know, you drop them off at 10 o'clock in the morning. They call you up at 1. They're like, okay, Archie's ready, right? Walk us through, like, what is an experience like for a dog when they get dropped off? That's a really room? good, yeah. that is a, I, I'm just, I really would love to be able to take somebody on a ride through the day. Yeah. It would be fantastic if I could actually do that well, for an owner because it's. We don't off anymore. Not more, no, that's why I'm just curious about that. But yeah. you do have a mobile. <laughs> yes, yeah. we okay. have a mobile grammar. Well, I want to talk about that too, but I'm curious but, for but those the, that drop people off. Yeah, the, okay. it is, so. I had to do it once when I was giant pregnant. I had to leave my dog with my stepsister. I knew her very well. I'm like, this is terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> it is to be on the other side of that where you're trusting a facility with your most, ch one of your most cherished, cherished family, family members mm -hmm. that really doesn't, can't articulate everything yeah. that's happened. Yeah. So it's a good question. And depending on the animal depends on its experience. And not all grooming salons are built for all types and personality of dogs. Yeah. So, you know, you walk in, <clears throat> if I got a dog, a lot of people, groomers will take three or four dogs <clears throat> in bricks of time. Yep. Some people will take all the dogs in in the morning. So mm -hmm. depending on their style, but the dog will come in, technically it'll be in a place that it's safe. Some people have free range grooming salons. Some people have kennels, some people have crates, yeah. some people have tie outs. So the dog will be housed and assessed and a bather will get the dog so for me a bath on a dog that's full coated let's say three or four inches long on archie mm -hmm. could take a good 45 minutes for me to wash and dry properly okay some people will take 10 minutes to wash and then pen dry it so it the dog will sit washed first dried then it gets on the grooming table so there's an assembly line process that happens so it two or three people may handle your pet at, at any given time and then the grooming goes as fast or as slow as the pet allows is usually what i say <laughs> you know i see and it can change from day to day with the same pet but once you've established a relationship with a dog it ends up being kind of like going into cheers and they know your drink and they know where you sit and they know your isms yeah. And it gets to be a much faster process. So the first few groomings at a salon probably will take you longer. And then clients, some clients like to use my salon. I did have a brick and mortar as a daycare. Sure. They were like, I'm not coming back till six. Take your time. So yeah. you have those clients and then you have the other clients that are like, I'm just going to wait outside the door. And you're like, um, uh -huh. you know, that's awkward for a, for a salon that's doing multiple dogs. You do have to be patient and it does take time. People always get concerned about their pet being at a place for so long yeah now if that's your concern as a pet owner i would suggest you ask for a little tour before you even bring your dog in can i just get a little peek of your place sure. or go down and do a meet and greet with your dog get in get a feel for the energy and the vibe of the place i see yeah and kind of go with your gut instincts i've always told owners that are super nervous i don't know if i should drop it off i'm like if you're not sure go with your instincts take your dog home if you're mm -hmm. not sure don't do it because your dog's going to pick up on that vibe and be like, why are you dropping me off? You're not even comfortable here. Why are you leaving me here? Their <laughs> eyes get big. They start to shake, you know, and shaking's not always the sign. <laughs> He's coming to say hi right now. Yeah, yeah. he is. He's mm -hmm. dad. Are you talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, follow your gut. Mm -hmm. It was what I tell owner. Do a meet and greet. It's well worth it. I've always encouraged nervous parents to come down and meet me first. Got it. Okay. It'll save everybody a lot of heartache. It's interesting. So we now, like Rich Bridget said, we have a, a mobile dog groomer mm -hmm. that comes great. to the house. Yeah, um, but it's like every other Tuesday at nine thirty a.m. the doorbell rings, right? And the dogs know. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like Chloe runs under the bed. <laughs> Archie's they like under the, the table. Shrimp. They're shaking. They're like, we got to go grab them. Like seriously, it's like a whole like. Yeah, but they've been going like. For years now, and I don't, I don't understand yeah, I guess why I'm they're curious, still scared. Like, well, like, there is a I, I did notice Archie being like a bit like, oh, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. and it's so you're not going to win all dogs over, but I can tell you that some of the dogs that I've had that are the, 
I take a lot longer than most groomers do. Uh -huh. yes. I don't know if you noticed. Yes. yes. <laughs> Uh -huh. Because I want to build a relationship. Yeah. Everything I'm doing, I want to make sure that we're on the same page with. Our yeah. no, a lot of dogs don't like their feet touched, so this is a thing where I will kind of just slowly do it. He does not like his feet touched. No. And, and I want to talk, well, he, so she came in and groomed Archie and spent a lot of time with him. We're going to talk about that whole yeah, experience. So but yeah, so... Uh -huh. If the groomer had enough time, so it's hard to create, make a living and have a, a schedule where you need to do a certain, it's quantity versus time and quality. Yeah. I can't fault a groomer for having a packed schedule and needing to get to the next I got pet. It. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that pressure is put onto the animal. Yeah, that's To move right. through a process. It's so difficult, though. It's a difficult balance. And it's the number one complaint of owners is like how long it's taking so long can I have my dog or can't I get in tomorrow and so groomers are trying to accommodate speed and quantity yeah where and then then it would back up to having a really anxious pressured grooming session I see versus like you know it's like an owner I would I sometimes will tell owners it's like asking your dentist to go as fast as they can on your kids <laughs> teeth cleaning you're like mm. i want to do that like hold dog still. can feel that oh you, my you gosh know? and it can feel when you're checked out thinking okay i'm running 15 minutes like i gotta do this and it's it does it travels through the brush travels through the clippers travels through the tug of war that happens i think there's a lot of tug of war and going on with him so yeah i'm like i'm not gonna play that game we're gonna do this together yeah this is a together thing mm -hmm. but i'm in, i feel very fortunate i'm in a place that i can do that now i don't want to say that every groomer's you know having understood kids and meet a quota and get some money in so i get it yeah. yeah i get it yeah but it is kind of a hard balance yeah well you've kind of um you know you you've reached the most successful point of a career because i've heard that you were actually on or behind the scenes on a tv show for hbo is yeah. that right what yeah. was that called hot dog hot dog yeah, okay what a fun. name that like was it. fun that was fun <laughs> yeah how did how did that come about i'm just curious so uh though i think uh, Jess Rona okay. is a, a groomer that's pretty well known out here, and she's, she's got a very big following. She actually worked for me. I became a grooming salon manager at a Pet Smart many moons ago, and she, I was brought in to clean up. The grooming salon it was a failing salon, and they needed somebody to bring it back up, you know, to the regional standards. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like a Hail Mary. They brought, they hired me and brought me in. And Jess was one of the bathers there. I kind of assessed everybody who was working, got, you know, asked some people to move on. Wasn't quite their forte. I could tell. Jess Rona was hilarious. <laughs> she made me laugh. And she had a good nature about her. Yeah. Wasn't really very good at her job, but I could work with that. Uh -huh. So I put clippers in her hand and said, look, this is how you start to trim and this is so Jess Rona I taught her how to do the basics and she's gone on to do, do a beautiful career so come full circle working with this skincare product mm -hmm. uh, she was at one of the courses for a dog that who was having skin issues and she turned around she's like Kate Garcia and so we reconnected a f several years ago okay and she reached out to me they needed a mobile groomer to be on site to help with the dogs before and after huh. their TV moments what was the show? It was hot a grooming dog. contest called yeah. a Hot Dog. So oh, so it's actually a grooming contest. Yeah, they were contestants. The groomers were contestants. I see. Competing, and Jess Rona was one of the judges. I, I'm sorry to say I'm not familiar with the other two people that were That's judges. Okay. Yeah. But they were non-groomer. They were not in the grooming industry. Yep. So I knew some of the contestants from the trade shows that I've taught at. I've traveled and done the trade show net, uh, circuit. So a lot of these people were professional groomers. And some weren't. Some were just people that applied, and she led on the show. It was really great. Huh. Wow. So now, uh, so like, you know, my wife and I, Bridget, we've got a son that's in the acting business, oh. right? And so mm -hmm. there's the, uh, the the stage moms, I guess, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious, was there stage doggy moms? <laughs> Well, there were like handlers. The it, was, it was a whole new scene for me, to be quite honest. It was a lot to ask. You know, it's a lot to ask of an animal to be groomed in the first place. Sure. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Now stress out their the groomer, uh -huh. put them under lights and cameras, and then there's a whole level of animal care professionals that have to be on site making sure every animal is handled properly. It was just quite the amazing plate-spinning fur-flying circus. Huh. And I was 
grateful to be part of it, but not on camera yeah. for sure. And I got a lot of interesting energy things from the dogs. And that's where I kind of met one of your producers. Yeah. Both Whitney. of your producers, actually. Yeah, actually. Uh -huh. um, Whitney. And there was some downtime and I was asked, you know, can you bathe one of her dogs? And I thought this would be a good time because I was taking classes to become an animal communicator. Yes. And so I... Uh, I know better now. I should have asked permission first. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, sure, I'll spend some time with our animals. And so it was calmer environment. And, you know, even on, I, so I watched one of her doggies and thought, oh, I, you know, tell me what makes you happy. Tell me what bugs you. You know, what are your, <laughs> you know I don't even know what to ask when I get in there. I was like, just let's just do this. And so, and I had done it for a few of my clients. It's like Dr. Doolittle, right? It kind of is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. You know, you put your intuition that you already have with them already, you know, from my years of working with them. Yeah. And kind of picking up what's going on, but not anything outside of grooming. I've never really pushed it further. So it was really fun. So yeah. that's where that kind of. Yeah, Whitney had said that, you know, because um, when we we're looking for people to bring on to the, the show, and thank you for coming. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Whitney was like, oh, my God, you guys got to meet Kate, you know, because, <laughs> like, she cherishes her little dog, you know, and um, and so she's like, yeah, you know, she's a great groomer. She was on a show with me, but, you know, she also, like, was able to kind of pick up things from my dog that, like, I was like, how the heck did she under like get this, right? And so... That's the whole animal communicator thing, right. I guess. And how long have you been doing that for? Well, probably since I was born. I mean, I really mm -hmm. have come to realize, thanks to your podcast, it's really made me step back and think about like the hows and the whys yeah. and the, the nuts and bolts of it. So, And I, I still consider myself a student in this, just sure. to be clear. But this is something that I've always done that I'm always surprised that people don't understand when I'm saying, oh, your dog, you know, is doing that because he's very nervous about this. And they're like, what? Yeah. How do you see that? I'm like, I'm like, how do you not see that? Like, I, I'm unclear that it's not clear. Yeah. So I'm just taking that to the next level. And uh, with COVID hitting and people having to slow down their careers and businesses, and I'm not a spring chicken anymore. And I thought, you know, it's, grooming's very physical. I wanted to do something less physical, more con, you know, still connected with animals mm -hmm. and hands on. And so I started taking some classes and I've been doing that for about two years, taking courses. And I finally got certified wow. as an intuitive. That's in what it's called, an intuitive. Yeah, okay. I, that's what I refer to it. But yes, I, I was certified as an intuitive through a course and it was about a year and a half worth of work. Huh. And 99% of it is touching base with yourself touching your center kind of calming your own self to allow the awareness to arise of what's moving around near you yeah it's really about awareness huh so now in you know monday morning right whitney had set it up you show up at our house mm -hmm. right and you've got this beautiful van and it's <laughs> like the perfect van to do what you want to do right yeah. it makes it very comforting and so you know, on the side you hear, yap, 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 right? Our oh, other first dog. thing. <laughs> first thing, hopped out. It was like. Chloe, right? So <laughs> Chloe's our. She's old. Yeah, she's 13. Yes. Right? She's an older girl. I think she's about 13. Right? Yeah, she's 13. Yeah. She, she doesn't think so. No, she doesn't. She doesn't <laughs> no. act that way. And she's a miniature schnauzer. She's the boss in the house. Oh, 100%. She's probably like, the boss of the block. Right? Yeah, <laughs> she is. Yes. Um, and, uh, but you're not here to see chloe you're here to see archie right right um and so uh yeah so we wanted to kind of see like well let's let kate spend some time with archie and uh get to know him a little bit and so we got y'all set up and then you know about you were there by almost two hours two hours yeah yeah right yep it's a long time you got to spend some time with him you know, and I'm curious to know, kind of after you close that door, like what happened in there during those two hours? <laughs> yeah, right? I think magic. we're all curious. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can't burn sage and stuff like that. Animals don't dig smoke. So, mm -hmm. um, but I do certainly center myself prior to even coming out there. And I did ask to, uh, that I got a picture beforehand. Okay. Because I'm working on some of the remote process because it is it is a thing that you can do communication remotely. And I'm, work I'm working on that as well. Mm -hmm. And so I first start in a place that makes me comfortable. It's almost like when you start to drive a car, when you first learn to drive, you're nervous, but now you can drive and probably change a radio station and eat a sandwich, And but you couldn't when you first started. So That's right. 
I need, I realize with this, I need to be in a comfortable space. Mm -hmm. So grooming is what I do. Yes. And that's my comfortable space. Mm -hmm. And it also takes them a little bit out of their environment. So I'm not, in, I'm not inf infiltrating their environment. Some, at some point I wish, I hope to be able to go into homes and kind of see, but it, it's a more of neutral grounds and a little bit nervous. I mean, I'm yeah. not going to lie. Most dogs are, this is not what their idea of a great time is. Yeah. So, and Archie was no exception, nervous, <laughs> shaking. Yeah. separation anxiety could hear everybody going around outside sometimes i'll put music on pretty loud so it kind of muffles some of the sounds you know he knows his family's around uh -huh. which is okay because it makes them secure but it's still it's hard for them to connect with me when they're busy with everybody else but it, it took a little time and then he finally like i kind of just spent some time on the table with him massaging him kind of just going through with brushes and combs and brought him up on the and then started the bathing process and at that point what i try to do is separate out imagination from intuition okay and information coming in and then my wild imagination going bonkers yeah which is a you know it's hard for someone with adhd you know sure. you know my theory with attention deficit disorder i'm like i don't think i have a deficit i pay attention to freaking too everything. much <laughs> it's deficit to the teacher maybe <laughs> 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 that's their problem uh -huh. um so clearing my mind and just kind of connecting now ironically i have realized when i start to connect i want i start with like i'm at your door or i'm with you i want you to take me on a walk what makes you happy like what 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 do you love about your place and then i also say or what's concerning you mm -hmm. so i'll just work with the dog and usually it honestly takes about seven minutes i, I don't know where they Thoughts and are, are you going. massaging him at and this just time? doing my, I'm, I'm grooming yeah. like okay. I'm bathing yep. and I'm washing but I am slowing everything down so it does take time I'm making the shampoo and I'm massaging him and trying to like really and then all of a sudden I'll start to get like things that pop through mm -hmm. um, when I first touched in with Archie I think I'd said to you not even when I met him but with the pictures I felt like something came down across the front of me and I might have been up and I might have hopped back. It was a, a, a like start it was a nervous thing and it when I met him I could see that he could probably startle pretty easy if something fell off a shelf or fell across the front of him. So that was one thing that happened that I Yeah. You know I still don't know. i me and the kids were trying to figure it out. Like did anything fall in front of him? I don't know. Yeah. I mean when we first got him he uh we took him right from the place to a, uh, um, a the uh, like pet store, right? Okay. We were like, let's go get some, you know, yeah. treats and yeah. some toys, and and he was just like he stayed like he was like walking in between my legs. He was not just like, too much, yeah. yeah. And he uh -huh. still he yeah. very much needs a leader. I yeah. mean, obviously he was right behind you the whole time. Like exactly. you couldn't even get him in front of you in the way. Yeah. yeah, that's true. He yeah. needs a leader, and mm -hmm. that's. That's a Chloe is his leader. I can't wait to tell her everything about him yeah. because I want her to tell us uh -huh. and then me to tell her. Right, sure. right, right. Yeah. yeah. And so I did take some notes. Um, let me just look. Let me just look at these for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Now Archie's a. Uh, Come here, Arch. Archie. Who's a good boy? Go see daddy. I think all dogs are good boys, right? You know, it's the saying. Like, <laughs> who's a good boy? Like, every dog has gotten that, right? I know. I, it's uh -huh. pretty funny. People say, you know, oh, this is my, you know, emotional support pet. Right. And I'm like, what pet isn't? Exactly. <laughs> I'm not sure that people get pets to unstabilize themselves. Yes. Yeah. So I okay. agree. So then I got that there was a, it was an interesting, and I was trying to explain it, and I'm not quite sure, may, it might have been around the timeline that you've got, Archie, mm -hmm. but it was like Archie filled a spot of like a sibling. You remember me talking about yes. that? Yes, yes, and me and my son were like, what? <laughs> and mm -hmm. I'm just not sure if it was, so part of me thought maybe it was like, either have another baby or get a puppy mm -hmm. kind of thing. <laughs> no, we were done after, <laughs> <laughs> after so, Brooklyn. It, well, it might not have been for you, maybe it was, for it you. Like, it, it could have been for um, a sibling for Chloe, possibly. Possibly. Well, see, I didn't realize you had another. See, at the time when you just seen the photo, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. I felt like it, 
Archie is fulfilling a sibling-like role for somebody, a playmate. And I, and I was thinking of your daughter only because the pink on the leg, thinking, okay, did somebody, like, have an art? <laughs> we, don't, we still don't know what. And, the, and I realized both of them have it. <laughs> so it's, that's definitely kind of a marker. Uh-huh. Yeah. And <laughs> someone might not be fessing up to what happened is what I'm going to say there. <laughs> um, but, yeah. So I just felt like there's a playmate-sibling kind of vibe for Archie, but not so much for Chloe. Chloe's okay. a dog's dog, even though you put her in a dress and everything. We did get Archie for Brooklyn. Like yeah. that's that's something we wanted. Your daughter. Yeah. Yes. Okay. There you go. So All that's, right. there it is. Yes. yes. Okay. I got a really big hit that this is a sibling relationship more than a, and it's and it's fru- it has fruited. You know that's fruition. It's yeah. come to fruition. Sure. And when your daughter said, you know, she spoke. She's doing what I did. And I said, well, we don't know. We got to see if Archie will want you to be in here. And she's like, oh, he does. <laughs> you guys are all like, oh, ha, ha, ha. I'm like, no, she really does. No. <laughs> she really is telling you. That's how I used to do it. Yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. then I grew up out of it because that's, you know, I was told as a person that that doesn't happen. I just wanted her to have something because my boys had Chloe. They grew up with Chloe. Yeah. Right. Brooklyn, Chloe's old. She's not going to want to play around right. and, you know, run around and things. So that's, I told Jason, I said, we need to get another dog for her because, you know, she's little. That makes more sense I, to me. Yeah, I'm an exactly that was the happened. energy. Yeah. Okay, that mm-hmm. was the energy that I was picking up on. Okay. And that, this dog was like sent to you for that. Like mm. you put the energy out there and, so, and someone up there that's mm. helping you out went, oh, here's the pet. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. So. Got and it. I think. Okay, that makes there's that a reason settles. why. I'm, we'll get into that. But I think there's a reason why Archie yeah. chose us. Yeah. I do. Okay. Right. Okay. I, yeah. oh, I'd like to hear that story later. So, <laughs> and then I, I feel like there's like a show and tell or a kind of a group therapy. This dog is doing a therapeutic type of job for you, but also I think it could be in the community as well, like take her to class or at a park, like mm-hmm. someone's like pet day, or I don't even know if they have show and tell anymore in schools. <laughs> Schools, yeah, he's not allowed to go to the schools. Schools aren't even no, in session, so no, yeah. I'm not sure. Or maybe it's He would for, be the perfect dog for that. Or oh like a, not a yeah. Girl right. Scout, but maybe some other kind of group event. He'd be good at that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, let's see. What else? Archie's not a big fan of the heat. I know where you live can get very hot. I lived out there. Mm-hmm. The heat, and I kind of picked up on that before I even saw him, but seeing how he's kind of like a fair skin person with the red outlines the red points Mm -hmm. heat's not his thing you're almost like he runs hot already yeah and that escaping that heat outside is something and he took me to what felt like the coolness under like where a citrus tree was was a spot that's like oh yeah this is where i go and kind of like spread out Mm -hmm. or i like the citrus tree um but i i felt like it was an orange tree but it's definitely like a citrus tree that, and it has flowers and birds, and it keeps him occupied. But it's also a spot where he chills. Okay. You is know what he goes behind is the rosemary bush. Yeah. That's not citrus, but then he goes over by the gate. You know where um, our neighbors. That's yeah. a lemon tree. Yeah. So I'm like, well, maybe that's you know. Yeah. He was telling me it's that. it's kind of a place that it's cooler. Whatever it is, it's cooler there. He always goes than behind the, yard. the rosemary bush. That's yeah. Rosemary is maybe the neighbor's tree, I'll give it, but rosemary. So one thing about me is I'm the most skeptical <laughs> person of the stuff that you'll ever meet. So yeah. like rosemary is a maybe. The citrus tree, I think, has more to do with it over there. Okay. But he doesn't go lay over there. He okay. barks. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yes. Yeah. So if he goes over there, he's barking at the neighbor because the kid antagonizes him. Archie barks? Yes. Oh, yeah. yes, a lot. <laughs> You wouldn't think so. It looks like you just tattletailed on him. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I don't bark. I'm very <laughs> subdued. By the way, he's a golden doodle. If everybody wants to know, yeah, he's <laughs> a golden doodle. Golden doodle. Yep. It is a very. It's a. Ha- I put happy place. So I don't know. Maybe he. I'm not sure, but it also is something about the heat over in that area. Okay. 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 Let's see. All right, so when I tapped in, you did let me know, in fairness, that there was a medical thing that you were interested in. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I, I did know that. So part of this of, of my training is to tap in empathetically and kind of 
scan the body and kind of like whatever's going on, kind of scan through me and pick up. When I started to do that, as I, this at this point, I think I was uh, drawing Archie, and I just, and it's starting to happen again. I'm getting nauseous. It's like, you know how your salivary glands get like a little... Mm. Yeah. Um, like something upsets my stomach. Now, it was much stronger in my van than it is at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was nervous, so I was thinking maybe nervousness or maybe time of day, but I really got the sense of kind of a goofy stomach like with medication or like kind of what you get with vitamins that makes your stomach kind of funky. Yeah. Um, not like you ate something bad, but more like something's not... And I said, it feels like a medicated, like it's a, it's a supplement or a medication that's kind of not makes you nauseous a little bit. So that was the feeling that you thought he was getting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then he was started to drool a little bit, like just a tiny bit of drips came out of his mouth. Like that is a sign of nausea for dogs. Just a little bit. I see. Okay. Um, so that just kind of upset my stomach. It was, and it, actually it was. The first thing I wrote was digestion and tummy and nerves. Hmm. So this could be something that happens at, or is exacerbated by a nervous environment like the grooming van. Okay. Yeah. So um, he doesn't seem like it now as much, nearly as much. Should I explain? Yeah, go ahead. So Archie has epilepsy. Oh, he does. He has epilepsy and he has had it since... Puppy. A puppy. Yeah. And he was on a medication. It was Keppra. They put him on. Um, and now he's on phenobarbital. Phenobarbital, yeah. And he has seizures. The last one he had was last, when you were out of town, last, uh, week. last week. He had a pretty bad one, and he has them. So they're grand mal seizures. Oh, he has really bad seizures. He loses okay. control of his legs. He, you know, drooling. Um, Drinks a little he, much water. He yeah. was thrashing a little bit this past one. He's done that a few times, so that's what he has. Hmm. And so maybe the medication that he's on is making his stomach upset. So when you said his stomach, that's why I was a little like, oh, maybe the medication, but I wanted to wait to see. Yeah, yeah. and I don't know. I'm familiar with phenobarbital, but I don't know that it's a uh, – I've never heard of it cause inducing nausea. Like, it, I mean, what? how do we really know, right? Yeah. yeah. But interesting. Yeah. Because I, I actually wrote, like, autoimmune disease up here, hmm. which isn't necessarily seizure-related. That's more neurological. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. He's had, and he's three, right? He's three years old? Yeah, he, he is. is. three, yes. Well, mm-hmm. He's pretty young for having Yeah, that. he has really bad. It's not fun. No, especially in a big dog. It's very, I mean, in a, any dog, but in large dogs, it's... And the reason I said that I think he chose us um, is because my son... My oldest one, you didn't meet him, you met my middle one, he had epilepsy. Oh, interesting. And so I honestly believe So you that say had. He grew out of it. Yeah. No. And no, not him, not Archie. Yeah, no, no, no. She's Your saying, older yeah. son. My yeah. older son grew out of it. Yeah. And then Was that before you had Archie or after? Yeah. Yes, it was before. And then we got him. And it was almost like he chose us because we knew how to deal with epilepsy. Uh, I see. And you're sympathetic to it. It's not yes. completely like, no, people and animals live with this. It's yeah. not a, I'm yeah. going to take you back because or whatever. It's, sure. It's like epilepsy follows us. I mean, not to bring my brother-in-law into this, but his fiance just had two seizures this past mm-hmm. week. And it's like epilepsy just follows our family. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do. So they do say that animals will take on issues of the the owners or the environment you know my cat was fine and i had to go to hawaii to help my brother who was really sick Mm -hmm. and part of his illness was uh had to do with some congestive heart failure issues coming on and he's on the road to recovery he's doing really well now thank goodness i got home Mm -hmm. and like seven days later my eight-year-old cat jumped in my lap and was breathing funny brought him to the emergency room, was dead by the next morning of congestive heart failure. Oh, oh my, my God. God. I'm, so and I'm, like, I'm so sorry. How did that? I'm like, it was, and I can't help but think that there's an absorption of like issues in a healing manner to like, I'll take this and I'm going to move on. Your brother can stay here, <laughs> you know, wow. kind yeah. of thing, you know? Yeah. So I think he, he knew, you know, these are people that are going to, Take yep. care of me and understand. That makes sense. That makes sense that uh, there was a reason that this dog is with you as a sibling. I believe that. You know, 100%. Too. 
Yeah. And as a sympathetic, you know, and to your daughter now, having been exposed to a brother, possibly, I don't know if he was already It was grown before out, her time. Yeah, I was going to say, he's yeah, grown out still, of it. Yeah. But that who knows what that will do for her is like... Later on in life. Correct. Yeah. Like, she knows about it. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a family thing. And maybe, you know, a crusade to figure it out. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah. That, you know, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> you know? <Okay. laughs> what? Yeah, we got to let that. See, let me see what other kind of stuff. Yeah. So I kind of was, I didn't even notice. Does your house have an upstairs? It yes. Does. Okay. I, I mean, I was there in all fairness, so I, I, I'm just, I'm, I didn't even pay attention to the That's house fine. structure. But I feel like there's an upstairs, probably where the bedrooms are. And it's either, I felt like I was in a, I'm either in a crate that's kind of a wooden crate with slats, or I'm at a foot of a bed with a, uh, like, I'm at a foot of, uh, there's just like, that's where I rest. Yeah. <laughs> he does. Okay. <laughs> that's a place where I sit, and I, so I don't know if, I'm looking at it from, like, his perspective, but I can't see the whole picture, so I don't know if it's a crate or if it's Not a crate, a, no. No, it's, board. it's the end of the bed. Yeah, Footboard. end of the bed, okay. yeah. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah. And, okay, that's where I rest. I, that's what I put, um. Okay, then I got this picture of him laying on his side, like pawing under something to get something out. Like he's just, this is like a, I don't know if this is a kid's room and where he's getting stuff out from under a bed, but I can see him <laughs> laying on the side trying to get something. That was what came yeah, popping he's, in. He's notorious for stealing shoes. And he still he stole your jeans this morning. I know, I had to go get them from him. Yeah, so like that's the thing in our house. Anytime somebody comes over, like the boys will have like a friend sleep over. <laughs> okay, remember like when I told you he plays keep away? Yes. That's what it must be. Yeah, that's he, the keep away. That's what he does. Like that's his. He thing. doesn't chew it. No, no, he takes it. No, he, he takes. Ta- it. He just takes one shoe. Doesn't take okay, both. yeah. It's See, like wrote, he plays his game with everybody. Yeah, like, I said a good game of keep away is what I just wrote. I so wrote what that does day. that mean? Well, like, why does that. he take that? He's <laughs> playing a game with us. Why not? He does it at, at night when we're sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> oh <my gosh>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then people will come over. The boys' friends will come over and they'll be like. I don't know where. where I, like, where's my other shoe? I put it right next to the. Like who lunch. separates shoes? You just don't do <laughs> and that, we're like, right? And Archie, it's like, Archie, go check under our bed, and then sure enough, it's, it's always the same it's spot. Under the bed? It's always the same spot. It's always yeah. the same okay, entire so spot. So that's what I'm yeah. seeing him like. Mm-hmm. Okay, so okay, good job, <laughs> yeah, Archie. Very that's sophisticated. Funny. Keep, keep away. away. Yeah. Yeah, I wrote keep away. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. He's so funny. Okay, where did I? You're a happy boy. Oh, interesting. Okay, so I have here, I wrote here, rest is really important to him and I have a headache. Huh. Huh. Well, he, go, he goes like this a lot. Yeah, He's but I am, I'm I'm wondering if the the seizures create any kind of precursor as a headache. I, interesting. I, I don't know. Did your son ever get headaches or was it? Uh, I just that no, I, I wrote. I mean, he had a different kind of epilepsy, yeah, you know, yeah. so. Um, yeah. For, okay. But that's good to know. It rest. I just put important to him is rest, and he's waiting for someone to get home. There's like a spot where he waits, and then sometimes I'll go to that place where I, when I get a headache, hmm. and then so this is where my my imagination pushes on intuition. So I'm not sure. And I thought, well, maybe somebody in the house has migraines, and he rests with them when they have a migraine. Hmm. So. But no. now, I, I th- with you saying epilepsy, I'm thinking it's him. It's yeah, his head. it is, probably. And then maybe, does he go to a place before he, he go- has a seizure? He and knows. It's coming, like, and then he goes. He did. He jumped up on me. <coughs> yeah. He actually, the last one he had, he like, Came jumped you. up on me. And I was like, oh, boy. And it's I coming. knew. Yeah. And I, you know, put him down. When he had his first epileptic thing, did he fall? The first time I noticed it was in my be- in my yeah, office. Yeah, it was in your office. And he just lost control of his legs, and he didn't know what to do. He was trying to like get up, but he couldn't get up. He just completely lost control of his legs, and so we didn't know what it was. And we brought him to the doctor, and then they uh, yeah yeah. Well, mm-hmm. no, they we just brought him to the vet, and they did blood work, and then, then we he had another the one like eventually, and we took him to the the neurologist. Yeah. Okay, I got this. This is pretty funny. He feels like there. I think there's like something that, how do I explain this? So what I'm seeing is like a person in a room that is either on a headset playing like a video game or a Zoom call or talking to somebody else really engaged. And he's in the room, but he feels like he's part of the conversation. Like he's like, oh, 
like you could like he's being talked to he enjoys mm-hmm. it like it yeah was, it, i just said you know he's someone is he feels <laughs> like someone's talking to him well his thing is he watches tv yes Oh, that's you did show me that I did see that picture. Okay. Okay, so that's his thing. Like he's he, the first dog ever. Like he will like watch literally TV. like watch the whole movie and get into it. Okay. Yes. I've never seen a dog like that before. No, like, I haven't. He is, movies, he's like a human. Yeah. I, that's it. Yeah. I said he's more human than he is dog. He, he really is. I think he was like a human in his past life. Sure. I would totally. Yes. I think you're right. I really do. I think you're right. He sat there and watched Racing in the Rain or whatever it was that dog <laughs> movie, and me and Zach sat there and we're like. He's watching this whole movie. With us. <laughs> he was into it. We're like, holy shit! Like, do you want some popcorn? Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, why not? With your movie. <laughs> so that's probably exactly it. That and I didn't put that together because I did see the picture of him like looking at the television. But I felt like it's hilarious because they're not really talking to him, but he feels like it's <laughs> he's <laughs> part of the movie. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's working for him. Yeah, that's right. And then. I mean, I'm not sure about the origins of his name, but Min and I heard Archie. I got Josie and the Pussycats, which was kind of funny. Because huh. Archie was a ginger on Josie and the Pussycats, but I don't know if that I liked Archie. Um, Archie Bunker. Yeah. <laughs> I went Archie Bunker, and I'm like, there's no way. Because uh. this dog is too sweet to be Archie Bunker. <laughs> no, but I liked the name Archie. For some reason, it just It was just like, you remember the lady saying, Archie. Archie. Yeah, yeah so and that's. I was like, Archie, I love that name. Well, oh, what is... he loves you saying it. Oh, he's a good boy. Yeah, he loves his name. He's. He's also a dog that like smiles. Like when he came running in, he's like showing his teeth. He smiles. <laughs> yes. He's yeah. a people. Yeah, he, he's a people. He is. There you go. He, he is. Definitely well, is. well, that's awesome. You you kind of nailed it. You know. I yeah. got some things. I'm uh-huh. gonna give myself a hard C, but not an did, A. I think you did <gasps> really good. He's a hard good. one because he's he's so human like. You know, it's hard to. Well, yeah. He's not a dog like Chloe. Right. You know what I mean? He's definitely a human. I mean, he's. I really do believe he's part human. Yeah. Well, I, I you know, I, and is that an insult to humans or dogs? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I do get the sense that he's more in tune with the human nature, and Chloe's still more dog and earthbound. Yes. Yeah. So let me a- ask you this: <laughs> Is there? Um, and thank you for that for coming all the way to our house and spending time with Archie. He he had the best day, and he he was actually I felt his energy being different that day. I yeah, did. I did too. Yeah, I hope so. After the grooming, that it was like okay, that was a little bit of a different experience. <laughs> yes. yes, it was. He was excited to get into the car today too. He doesn't like cars. That's another thing. I'm sorry to no. drag this on, uh-huh. um, but he doesn't like cars. I can talk to him about it. Yeah. I'm already getting motion sickness thinking about it. It's yeah. a motion thing, I think. I think so, yeah. too. Yeah. But then today he got in the car. I was like, Archie, time to go. Let's get in the car. And, and he, he jumped, jumped right in. Excited. And he knew. Okay, right? Yep. Are yep. you listening to me? Well, he's like, I feel good, and I just was groomed, so it can't be those two things. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have any, like, favorite breeds to work with? I was going to ask her that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good, I you know, as a groomer, you think we'd get a lot of purebred dogs. I, as because I'm a pet groomer, so most of the pets I get are mixed. Mm-hmm. But there are breeds that have personalities, and then there's coat type. So breeds that I like to work with, honestly, I believe, like, Cavalier King Charles Spaniels are probably the easiest dogs oh, so to cute. trespass, <laughs> yeah, huh. if you will. They're, they're not as guarded, and they're amicable mostly you know i see but they do come with a whole list of health issues as well f- from their breed so i'm a big fan of crossbreeding and mutts if you will one german lady referred to her dog as a street cocktail which i thought was hilarious <laughs> it's a street cocktail <laughs> <laughs> so i do like a solid mixed breed on my grooming table i think cavaliers are really easy i love to groom honestly i get the most out of grooming dogs that are misunderstood mm. and have been deemed quote unquote bad or aggressive yeah huh yeah like pit bulls well that's, oh gosh no that's <laughs> no that's see, I'm, that, talking, that's, I'm talking york terriers like little terriers well, well schnauzers are known for like well, that that's the I've consensus been bit more by schnauzers than any pit bulls oh, is that shit, right geez. heck yeah yeah huh? because they're so cute you go in to pet them and they're like yeah i don't think so yeah or you go they're to do spicy. their nails uh-huh. see an aggressive pit bull you're not even going to be able to walk it into a shop mm-hmm. yeah 
a true aggressive dog, I've really only met like one or two truly aggressive dogs. And I've, have you turned, like, can you get a, your intuition tell you like this dog is going to bite me? I'm not going to take this. Client. And usually that's because I know I understand that the client will not be able to grasp what it's going to take. Yeah. And it will not change anything. I see. And you know, the client's attitude actually plays a big role in whether I can. You know, I think Chloe would try to bite her. Oh, a hundred percent. I would hope so to a degree. Like she's, any dog that's super intelligent. Jason, mm -hmm. I try to put her jacket on, and she like. Well, that's me. just because I think she's older now, and she's you know. No, her. remember when she was younger? They were like, we might have to put a muzzle on her because she's kind of grouchy. Yeah. <laughs> like, those are that's that's what I that's my <laughs> those are my peoples. <laughs> <laughs> I I believe in my last life I was a aggressive schnauzer. So let me ask you. So you said as a as a. Um, Mm -hmm. You had pink hair, lived uh, a wild name life. Name the color, pink, teal, mohawks, mullets, leopard print, shave, yeah. start over, grow it again, yeah. So when you see animals that are kind of rocking that. Yeah, oh yeah, I think it's pretty funny. I'm like, that's so 80s, man, but okay. <laughs> do you do that? Do you yeah. color dogs? I have, I have, yeah. I have, you know. <laughs> But do they know? Like, do you think they kind of know that they're kind of pink now or what? What? No. They I don't. think what they know is how we respond to it. Okay. Yeah. I a see. lot of what I realize in grooming, the, one of the biggest joys I have is when the uh, grind, I love the makeover. I've got some pretty incredible makeovers, mm -hmm. you know, from street mongrel to like, come and you can cuddle with me on the couch makeovers. Pets get more love and hugs when they're clean yeah. and cute. It's I just, see. you know, it's just, you know, and nobody wants to hug somebody oh, that so smells they get like more poop. attention. They get more attention. That's Even true. on the street, too, oh, from other oh, people, right? Oh, the big, you know. I don't And like does it boost the their egos? Do you think the dogs have yes. egos? I, so ego in the sense of do they, do they pick up on the, see, there's like a missing language. Ego, I would say, is more like confidence for them. Do they have confidence when people like, are greeting them positively? Yeah. But some dogs can't handle that attention. Some dogs, you know, I, I taught a, I taught a vocational school. I taught animal care in a vocational school for a while. And one of the things, when before putting kids into working environments, is understanding that when you smile and stare at a dog, mm -hmm. <coughs> in the dog world, that's. <coughs> you can drink me. some water. Go for it. Yeah. Um, I w well, we're talking about the dirty dog. <coughs> I won't hold the dirty dog. I think See? it's disgusting. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and that's true of a lot of people. Yes. They just won't embrace a grimy pup. And I get it. I understand that. But when we smile and bare our teeth and stare at a dog, that is a, that's what they do to each other before they attack each other. Yeah. So some dogs misread all that. Oh. <laughs> and that's why toddlers are sometimes so threatening to a dog. What? Yeah. What? So dogs, right? You see, they sniff each other's butts. That's mm -hmm. kind of like handshakes. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like a handshake or it's kind of like a business card. Okay. <laughs> it's a business card. Like, where have you been? What are you about? Got it. What's your sex? You know? Yeah. <laughs> see, that's the thing. And so like, you know, like you got dog parks and dogs love to go there. But sometimes like I'm scared to take a dog there because you don't know how aggressive the other Archie dogs like will it, be. Mother? Right? He's a people. It's not a dog. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a people. people person. He'd yeah, probably go a find a mellow person on a bench going, hey, can we hang out? Yeah. <laughs> he did not like it. No, he really does. That's kind of his thing. He'll <laughs> hang out. He hung out with us the whole time. The whole right? time. The he whole hung time. out with us. Right. Yeah, yeah. So he's more of a people person. But it's so fun to go to the dog parks and see all the different I dog know. personalities. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I just, it's like a movie for it really me. Is. It's, it's hilarious. The best. Yeah. I was just watching somebody walking their dog out here earlier. It's like the dog is doing its job and he's looking around. His ears are up, his tail's up, and the guy's on his phone. Uh -huh. this. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, no, show if his him dog some like jumped and barked at somebody, like, that came out of nowhere. I'm like, not really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, ego, I would say they have. Conf levels of confidence I see. and comfort okay. versus ego. Got it. I think Chloe's got an ego. <laughs> yeah, I think she's got confidence. <laughs> she's cocky. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's got Which confidence. is great. That's why she's like, why are you putting me in a dress? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, well, we play this thing at the end called Hennessy Heart to Heart. Uh, where I just ask questions. Yeah. And then you just answer whatever comes to mind. Okay. Right? Sounds good. So there it is. It's really easy. So first question is, what is your best childhood memory? Probably walking in the tide pools with my dad. Okay. Yep. I love <clears throat> tide pools. 
we had we had some property up in Santa Barbara, mm-hmm. and we'd go there in the summers. And I, you know, of course, I didn't realize how spoiled we were back then. But it really bonded me with the ocean and the creatures in it. I used to sit for hours and play with uh, hermit crabs and get them to change shells, and I'd collect them, and we'd have games. You know, it was and every day was different because the tide would come in and out. Awesome. You ever go there to tide pools? To kind all of, the time. Yeah, huh? It is my, it is my north. It yeah. is my center. It's where I go to, yeah. like, remember and reconnect and go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Where are some tide pools? I'd like to take Brooklyn. Yeah. Tide pools? Um, probably Palos Verdes Coast has okay. Okay. some nice tide pools, you know, up Santa Barbara. Yeah. You know. That's cool. And you got to get the tides right. High tide, low I tide. Spent, I spent most of my childhood playing baseball so like i like to like just go watch a little league games right it brings it, yeah nostalgic for me um do you have any phobias <laughs> working on them hmm. so i i don't like feet no no I, I mean i like my feet and i like baby feet but i don't like people looking at my feet if i don't know you well enough you shouldn't be looking at my feet <laughs> okay even if i'm wearing <laughs> flip-flops and so whenever i tell people that they instantly like so my feet are covered today so i know that's i'm like i want to see your feet now <laughs> and then you know i i've i've hurt people for touching my feet when they weren't supposed to so you don't like pedicures no, they're torturous, but yeah, I get see? them. But it's just like I close my eyes and I'm like, okay, oh, I can like get through this. I can get do. through. So you want to massage? <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Just like it's done. So I'm getting better though. I literally did some EMDR therapy over it. So that's okay. how like dumb it is for wow. me. <laughs> if you had the power to correct one problem in the world, what would you fix? Uh, pollution, probably. Okay. Pollution. You know, the wor- a world problem, like an earth problem, would be pollution. Sure. What's the best concert you've ever attended? Oh, wow. And there's been so many. Hmm. <laughs> so, as a punk rocker, it was definitely the Dead Kennedys. Okay. Yep, love them. Got it. I went to... Um, an Elton John concert that was just phenomenal. Yeah. 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 And actually, you know, one of the funnest ones, though, was a bluegrass concert I went to after Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? I love the music from the Oh Brother, Where Art Thou's, this, you know, um, and they brought a lot of those bluegrass players to Hollywood Bowl. That was a blast. Oh, that's awesome. That was so different and such a blast and so impressive. Not a lot of lights, not a lot of smoke and mirrors. It's these individuals up there fiddling away as fast as they can so that was a really great concert awesome are you inspired by any celebrities dead or alive and what inspires you about them so dead or alive so one is definitely a celebrity and one would probably be a semi-celebrity yeah yeah most influential and inspirational was joseph campbell Okay, who's um, that? He, see, he's probably, he's an author. He was a, a theologian okay. and an author, and he, I bumped into him 30-some years ago watching PBS with Bill Moyer, I think is his name, was the interviewer, and the subject was the, the power of myth. Okay. He wrote a book called The Hero's Journey, and he just, he kind of cracked open, um, the world for me as far as religion and philosophy and making me a deeper thinker got it so that and then david bowie i love david bowie david bowie here's one if you were a specific dog breed which breed would you be probably a schnauzer is that right <laughs> yeah huh I, you know they're they're small compact but if you rub them the wrong way you're gonna know it <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Question. Huh. I what I would be. <laughs> Think about. It. I'm gonna come back to you, Bridget. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's something on your bucket list? Actually, changing my career to be an animal communicator full time. Cool. Yeah, I'm pushing it hard. You're on your way there. Yep, I'm pushing it hard and finish the book that I started. So there you go. Those two things that are, I'm working on those two things. Yep. What's a song that always puts you in a good mood? Pretty much anything by Jackson Brown. Okay. Yeah, Jackson Brown. I love Jackson Brown. If the world ended tomorrow, what would you do on your last day? If the world was ending 
tomorrow. I get a full day, right? I get a yep. morning till night. Mm -hmm. Go to Disneyland. Oh. There you go. <laughs> go to the tide pools with my family. <laughs> I would go. go to the beach. 100% nice. go to the beach, eat lox and bagels and cream cheese and avocado, <laughs> and then probably have sushi <laughs> and play with my grandkids in the sand and tide pools for sure. Make sure dolphins were coming. Speaking of grandchildren, how would your children describe you? Oof. And how many children do you have? I have two children. Okay. I wanted a boy and a girl, and I got that. Okay. And I wanted them three years apart, and I got that. There oh, you wow. Go. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, they would probably, intense, um, but truthful, and probably very giving the same time good characteristics and what do you see as your best characteristic knowing how to admit when i'm wrong okay <laughs> yeah that's hard, hard to do yeah it, it, it's it's a something i've worked at and i've embraced and really now i'm wrong a lot and it teaches me a lot so i'm okay with it what's something weird about you something weird about me Besides the feet thing. Yeah, I was going to say, like, what, I feel like, what isn't weird about me? Like, being an animal communicator, efforting isn't weird enough, right? Um, that I like peanut butter and cheese together. Okay, that's a little weird. <laughs> that's pretty weird, huh? Yeah. Sharp cheese with a little bit of peanut butter. Well, they make those cheese and peanut butter crackers. That's not too Yeah, that's pretty, I yeah. guess so. I was eating that before that. It was a thing. But, yeah, you're right. I didn't realize that is a thing. Yeah. So that's not that weird if I can get weirder. What would, I don't know. Um, that's kind of weird. I'll say that. It's like, pretty like weird. Peanut butter and cheese on bread. Like, like that's a little nobody's different. Oh, like on bread you eat it. I, I would eat it on bread for sure. Yeah. Okay. I've been known to put peanut butter on my quesadilla. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> it's, it's not good for... It's it's thick. You can only do a little bit of that. Yeah. Um, what's your most unusual talent besides anything that we talked about today? Because I think being a dog communicator is a little unusual talent. Yeah. But what else? Talent-wise, um, I don't know. Is that a talent? I can't do it. <laughs> She's crossing her fingers. Oh, no, I can't do that. How do you? I that would have to like talent. try to like. <laughs> I can't. That, I can't. That's different. Yeah, I'll give you that. <laughs> I can't. I, do I don't. That. If I, I could get paid for it only. And talent, I would think something you could actually like market. <laughs> well, see that you know it's it's not an easy question to answer. It's not an easy question because I don't know that that's a talent, but it's yeah. odd. <laughs> Every time I ask somebody that, they stop and they think I'm like, "Oh, that's a good question." What is your philosophy on life? Oh, that little one. Hmm. It's like theories of everything. My philosophies on life, obviously they've changed over time, but that it's to be embraced and it's to be examined. And I know for me, I get lost in the weeds sometimes. So my philosophy is like definitely like, have the vision of maybe the hawk once in a while or an eagle yeah. so that you get the bigger picture. It's so easy to get stuck on the wheel and to kind of figure out what's next and how to be better. You know, how to be better at what's next. Okay. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to figure out what is next and how to be better at that. That's awesome. Good way to look at life. Well, Bridget, thank you for coming and being a part thank of this. Thank you for having me, my husband. <laughs> Archie is here, and and most importantly, in this episode, Kate. Thank well, you. Thank you yeah. very much for having me. I really, I really appreciate the. You know, I'm not gonna lie. It was I was nerve wracked. Yeah, I huh? was nerve wracked in it, but it's really about. see, it's what's next and how do I do it better. So yeah, you've given me that opportunity to try to push forward on my. Well, well, life we philosophy. appreciate it and. <laughs> Archie certainly appreciates it. Um, he got to know you. You got to know him a little better. We learned a little bit more from this yeah. episode. And so for anybody that might be listening mm -hmm. right, to this episode and they either want um, an amazing dog groomer or a dog communicator to come get a session, how do they, how do they get in touch with you? So I do have a website. It's studiogrooming.com. Okay. 
and you can go there and you can contact me through the, the there's my phone number is on okay the website yep uh, i also sell some of the products that i spoke about and the animal communicator part of it's under construction but it's coming that's okay and yeah. will you travel for the communication stuff yeah, yeah i don't have a problem traveling yeah. you know i would like i I prefer to see people and talk to people in person as mm -hmm. much as a lot of people. You can do this animal communication via Zoom and sure. through photographs. Obviously, if people are in other countries, it's yeah. difficult. But I, I love to travel and meet people. So. And who's nice. your ideal client? My ideal client is someone who is curious and wanting to understand something. I almost feel like sometimes I'm a mediator. Yeah. You know, or a interpreter. Sure. To a degree. You know, for instance, yesterday a woman brought her dog over to me and she's, dog's bouncing off the end of its harness and <laughs> just going every which way. And she's talking about the other dog that's perfectly calm. And I'm like, can you just hold a minute? Yeah. <laughs> this one. Uh -huh. And I walked it a little bit. It was terrified of me. I just said, you know, your dog's really confused and doesn't know what you want. She's like, really? Huh. Like, yeah, that's what's happening here. I'm like, you've got to get clear on what it is you want this dog to do and figure out a way to communicate that. I see. And so yeah. she, everything she was doing was communicating the opposite. So it was just like an interpretation. I see. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, awesome. Well, thank you again. Uh, this will not be the last time we see you. We'll have you at the house again to, to hang out with Archie or maybe even give some Chloe some love, too. Oh, so, yeah. I would love yeah. to get my hands on yeah. Chloe. She's probably got a lot to say. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, and maybe I figure what would be nice is for me to do an anniversary kind of where I was now, where I am now, and where I will be in a year from now would be great. For yeah. Me. Yeah. Well, let's keep in touch for yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, you know, I definitely want to help you out with whatever it's issues you might be going through with them. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. Thank you Take for having me. Yes. Right on. <laughs>